All right, I've known all along. It says so in the first scroll. And Chambers took the clay and molded it. And then doth put in the plaster. And then from it came forth the false face. And that then has become the brothers and the sisters, the apes that you see before you now. Very well put, Roger said. Well put. Thank you, John. It's all done with latex and sponges and whatnot. For the greatest ape of them all, our great lawgiver, guides us in so many ways. Upon entering this cavernous room filled with dignitaries of the, of the foam and latex nature, I have to say that even myself, who have seen some incredible feats, was awe-inspired. Man and ape and chambers are all closely related. It felt kind of strange. You felt like, oh my God, I'm, I'm here amongst all these, you know, these names and, and make up history, you know? And it was, it was great. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. to say anything. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it was due to your brilliance that I was permitted to have one of the most exciting experiences of my life. And intermittently, for the next decade, I was involved with you and your masterful array of cohorts in what has emerged to be one of the truly great and very original adventures of film. Well, Tommy Berman was the apprentice, and he's the one that was responsible for telling them to get me. I was available. That's how it started. You know, John Chambers was the person who uh, gave me my first opportunity to work in film business. I worked on a wax museum project with him. He recommended me for an apprenticeship at 20th Century Fox, and then eventually uh, uh, he came to 20th Century Fox and he and I started, I was his apprentice, and we started uh, January 2nd on Planet of the Apes and worked till I, mem I think September 14th. But it was just he and I on a little four foot by uh, two foot table to begin that huge film. I took green young men that I saw a certain talent in what they produced in other, other parts of makeup. And I says, These, this guy is an artist. And as I picked him, like Ken Chase, he wasn't a full-fledged artist then. And I put him on the key character of the apes, you know, Zaius. And I told Kenny at the time, I says, this is going to be a, something for you, Kenny, and you can do it. See, and, and he did it. When he assigned me to do Maurice Hoban's makeup in Planet of the Apes, I wasn't even a card-carrying member of the union. And that was a gutsy thing for him to do because, you know, there were a lot of forces at play there. And it didn't matter to John. If you could demonstrate to him, <coughs> excuse me, that you could do the job, you had it. The Planet of the Apes was the beginning of history being made. It was the, it was the first major breakthrough in prosthetics. When you went to work at MGM or Universal, uh, there were labs and those doors were closed. And if you were just a run-of-the-mill makeup artist, you weren't allowed to go behind those doors. It was very, very uh, uh, secretive, and it was uh, not available to everyone. John changed that. It was a dastardly outfit of nepotism, and no one could cut in. 
I worked on Hawaii first, the picture Hawaii, with John Chambers and Danny Sweetback. And then when Jan Chambers was called to do Planet of the Apes, she called me to do them. And they did, they did hard to keep her out. Well, she's only a wig maker, you know. There's a woman with very fine talent and knowledge that started at 16 as a wig maker for Max Factor. She has done admirable work all these years and such a humble person, you know, a kind and humble person. And he's helped me so get into the union. He's helped me get work in the studios. So I owe it to John and then speak that what I am today. Maurice Stein, I remember him well standing by. <laughs> John, thanks to you, this industry is probably stronger now than it's ever been. The new kids that are coming up still know who John Chambers is. They still talk about the chance to meet John Chambers. All these people that, that worked with me, that they made that picture with it as it was. I wouldn't be in this business if it wasn't for you. God bless you. And we're just a nothing but a bunch of lunch buggers, but we do the best <laughs> we can. Uh, he was really the, uh, one of the person which I can say was helping me coming out here to the United States and out to California and uh, not knowing anybody. And that is the toughest part for any young guy, you know, to come out and trying to get back into the makeup profession. You know. Everything I ever tried to do in my career, almost everything, John had already done it. So, John, you're still on my idol. And the Planet of the Apes is the first makeup I ever did, actually, with prosthetics on myself. That's not a scroll. <laughs> That's my cho-cho. <laughs> Beware the beast man, for he is the devil's pawn. No, no, uh, did they not teach you how to count in archaeological academy, Cornelius? I said the sixth verse. That was the sixth verse, sir. And Proteus brought the upright beast into the garden and chained him to a tree. The children did make sport of it. Have you forgotten your scriptures, Cornelius? No, sir, I have not forgotten, but I believe that was the 13th scroll. Nonsense. In fact, this is scientific heresy, and I won't hear of it. But, but there's the doll, sir. What doll? <laughs> the doll! <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Actually, that doll stimulates my ho ho. was found on the back lot of 20th Century Fox. <laughs> he taught me so much and let me be the best makeup artist I could be. And I have so many fond memories of that place. You and John have been a great inspiration in my life, John. I love you. Obviously, I'm here now and I'm doing what I do and, and I wouldn't be here without you. Thank you very much. So I thank you um, for giving me uh, the life that I've had in, in a very direct way and for giving me the family and the opportunities I've had. It's, it's all very much because of you. I could always go to John and he'd, he'd be in the middle of a giant, giant project or something and he'd always have time to do these little projects for me. It was a dream that came true. Um, all these people that I read about growing up I've been lucky to meet and work with. I've never met you, but I owe you a great deal. And Leonard Nimoy was on there talking about his ears that he <laughs> used for the Spark, Spock character. And then all these many years later, here I am now doing basically a Spock character, which is Tuvok, on the new Star Trek show Voyager. So it's kind of like coming full circle. All of the molds I have ever made came from your technology. I still invest the positives into a rectangular base. I don't mix piss water. <laughs> the thing that, that for me cemented in my mind that, that this is what I need to do with my life uh, because John took me in uh, there was a shelf up against one wall and uh, he lifted some covers and showed me there were about half a dozen uh, uh, <coughs> actresses and models breast casts. <laughs> my attention to detail that I do in my work, I was looking at ape muzzles and trying to emulate them. Your sculpting techniques, I, I wish to God I'd been old enough to work with you. <laughs> if you were to take every show in Hollywood right now and look at it and follow the path back John Chambers, Dick Smith, these guys have touched it all. Dick on the East Coast and John on the West Coast, you know, finally said, you know, kind of opened the doors to Shangri-La and said, this is, this is what we're doing and, you know, you too, kid, could learn this. It's a piece of history that's so important and I think a lot of people, young people who want to get into this profession today, I think it's important for them to know who it was that started off, who, who was at the foundation. John put me to work and uh, gave me a profession and because of his help enabled me to raise a family and uh, also to give them a profession. Unbeknownst to me, uh, Harry and John had had a long conversation and uh, when I went back in two weeks, Harry looked at me and he said, you know what, if John Chambers says you're the guy, you're the guy. And I stayed there for 15 years. And John, I, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for you. I was a young guy in my early 20s with a small family, and you helped me get my 30 days in the union, and Steve and I worked in your garage, and probably the last of the group to get in. John, back in the 60s, one of my favorite television programs was The Outer Limits. Yeah. There's a lot of people here involved in that, I can see. One of the things that, that amazed me the most was the six-finger makeup. That stuck in my mind, and one day I saw a picture of you working on that in Famous Monsters, and the rest was history. When I came to the business, people were imitating John Chambers. And I thought one of the greatest things to do is to imitate somebody uh, every now because you're stuck in your mind so well. So finally when I got to meet you, I said, yeah, that's the guy, because he acts just like him. You only lived like five minutes from NBC, and every time something would come up that I couldn't handle, I'd run over to John. I know of the people that he helped, and I want to thank the young people for carrying the torch and carrying on John's great work. <coughs>
God bless you, and happy birthday. And I heard the story, stood up in that executive board, he said, no way. He said, I will ask that this board appoint Howard Smith. And John Chambers did it, and John Chambers had me there for 21 years as their business president. And I'm completely indebted to you, and so privileged to know you, and so proud of you, and I'd like to wish you a happy birthday on the behalf of the Post family. Uh, I remember going to Johnny's house for uh, when we first started playing with the with the appliances uh, uh, back in the garage. <laughs> well, you know, we wouldn't have had Mission Impossible without John. I mean, it's as simple as that. Well, this isn't me. Watch. <laughs> I was the character we called Julius. He was one yeah. of the, the wacky gorillas. Yeah. Um, and also kind of organized all these apes to get them all together. It's a buddy system thing. It's almost like a theatrical troupe in the sense that we all can do each other's makeups. We made ultra cow molds. We used oil-based clay for our sculptures. They were foam latex appliances. They were store-bought wigs with uh, rabbi beards that we had altered and and uh, cut into the shapes of the hair pieces that we needed to create the the facial hair for the apes. Each character was a retooled version of the original makeups from original molds. 2.30 in the morning we started doing applications. By 6 o'clock that morning most everybody was at least in their prosthetics. Again it's a very tight-knit group of of friends and as far as the the little boy chimpanzee Bobo he actually wore one of the uh, female chimp appliances as well it just he perfect size face and it fit him just fine he actually fit right in with us it was I'm very proud of him for not getting freaked out it was an honor to do this for John and definitely an honor to do it in the way that we did it because I think it came off the way it should have, and it was very well received. I think he enjoyed it. Um, talking with him since then, he, he certainly is very appreciative. I think he realized just how much effort was put into this party and um, how appreciated he really is. I'll tell you one thing that every good soldier knows. The only thing that counts in the end is power. Naked, merciless force! There he goes, talking about his <laughs> sex life again. <laughs> Never have I ever said that all humans are evil simply because their skin is bare. No! As our great lawgiver tells us that never, never will the humans have the apes divine faculty for being able to distinguish between evil and good. Oh, so 355. <laughs> <You're done. laughs> Emmys, Oscars. Yes, 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 Gerald. <laughs> At the time, the ancient skipped humans as household pets. Until our great lawgiver proved that man cannot be tamed. Keep digging, Cornelius. You'll soon find evidence of the master of this house. An ape. <laughs> What's his name? Would an ape make a human doll that talks? Your conclusion is premature. <laughs> a word and a friendly word of advice at that. When doing your archaeological digging speaks for you, don't bury your reputation. Besides, this is a gift. Defender of the faith, guardian of the deep dark secret, you have known all along. You're right. I've always known about John. <laughs> the makeup zone was once a desert. <laughs> Chambers made a paradise of the game. <laughs> what is that? You are a menace. <laughs> Dr. Zira, I believe Chambers would like a kiss. <laughs> All right, but he's so damned ugly. <laughs> Release the prisoner. <laughs> Find Dr. Zayas. 
Captain. And maybe some loose change under the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant? Pitcher explosives are going to seal up the cave. But, Captain, what about the cake? <laughs> if it, there would be no cake. <laughs> I'm just happy to be part of all of this and have to the opportunity to thank John for influencing my career interest at an early age. When I was a shy kid of 12, my mom drove me out to John's studio. Upon arriving and realizing it was a house, I thought my information was wrong and returned home disheartened. <laughs> no kidding. I was Dr. Pretorius. Would an ape make a human doll that talks? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Great. <laughs> Planet of the Apes and other films. That Mission Impossible is also a big influence, so it was a wonderful opportunity for me to uh, oh, give a little something back. And doing this really just topped off anything that we could possibly do since high school with doing this, and it was just an absolute pleasure, and I, I just want to thank you again. Thank you. I had a wonderful day that day with you, yeah, and it was a great fun, and a pleasure to be with you on that day. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you very much for yeah, everything. Bless you. Ever since I was a child, it has been an absolute yeah. pleasure just doing and to see him smile from what we were doing was extremely exciting for us. I hope that this stays in people's minds a long time. For its time, for my experience, for my ability, and everything concerned, I think we tried hard. I saw a spread in Life magazine as an enthused kid uh, of Planet of the Apes, which I thought was sensational, and I wrote a fan letter why the hell would I think anybody would even get it? But I, I sent it to Fox Studios to John Chambers. I don't think a week went by, and I got a, a, I got a letter in the mail from John Chambers. Uh, with trembling hands, opened it up, and I said, I can't, please. I read it, and he invited me to come to Fox Studios. This was before Planet of the Apes came out. And he was very nice, and very bluff, and uh, welcomed me to poke around. And I thought I'd probably met the greatest guy in the world. And I'll, I'll never forget opening up Life magazine in, in 1967, I think it was. And, there was this great picture of Maurice Evans holding an umbrella with this orangutan makeup on him. Ah, what is this thing? This is so cool, you know? And, like, and then I went to see the movie, you know, and, and I sat there through this film and waited. And, and the, you know, the, you, the first time you saw the gorillas ride up on the horse is just one of the classic moments in motion pictures. You know? John, in my opinion, you started this whole lab uh, makeup effects. Everything that we do today, you were the one who first started us all to do this and when I first came down here I remember going to you and meeting you and I just felt you know how more complete can life be well you've been an idol of all of ours I mean let's face it it's always to it you're, you're the best and you have been and the outpouring <laughs> of love in this room that I feel in here I have never just felt this before it's there's an electricity running around through you today and I think it's the greatest thing and you deserve every part of it because you have helped me everybody i think that john has done more for this for this business than any of us before him and there were first westmore and jack dawn and we were sort of pioneers in a way uh, i don't think that we had the impact on creating a love of makeup that john chambers have had i had the luck with john to literally be able to spend three years with him, all by myself. Uh, one thing I remember that, that John always taught me, which I have passed on, is don't keep any secrets. I have it. Uh, John told me one time, he said, the day that you can get better than me, bless you, go do it. I feel so proud to see how these young men that a lot of them I've helped along the way, like you saw it here, but I feel proud that I had a hand in generating some of that things that they do they are capable of doing today let's sing happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy
چند میگه دم دیگه میگه He has done me a, a wonderful, beautiful things, uh, and everyone, you too, Rick. You know? But thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'll carry this. my years thinking about this too you and I look back I didn't know I had so many friends you've, you've done, done a lot throughout the years, years. You've, you've earned, earned the, the respect, respect of all your peers you've, you've inspired so many in their careers, careers and allowed us apes to face our fears he spoke a man he spoke <laughs> You've given us the encouragement to carry on. So we just have to say happy birthday and thanks, John. The gorillas, warlike. The chimpanzees, use their minds, scientists. And my colleague, Dr. Mechis, and I, we are more politically oriented. I object. The same. Yes. Overall. <laughs> I think it was actually very amazing that uh, Dr. Zayas here actually was able to get out of bed and make it today. I caution you. Yes. Though a lady should be sitting down instead, I think. But I will let them have the spotlight. Yeah. I caution yeah. you also, Dr. Zira. Bright Eyes, I mean, John Chambers, is not quite that ugly, and I had a wonderful time. And I think then Mr. Chambers liked the kiss, too. It was very special to be in the presence of John Chambers that day. Uh, we do owe our existence to him, you know. Behind every great ape, there is a great man. And that man is John Chambers. <laughs>